the season to recap. I think it's gonna end up being around like 45 minutes long. I don't think it'll be more than that. Hello and welcome to the season two recap of my Royal Family series. This is a very long video, so there are just a few things I want to cover before we start. I will make it very, very quick. One, I highly recommend watching the season one recap video if you have not already. I will link it in the description below. I will be referencing things from that video. Two, instead of covering things in a long timeline from the series, I am covering each kingdom story. So I'm recapping each kingdom separately. And then the last giant section will be Alice May's section because it is the most detailed story. So I have added chapters because this is a very long video. So if you want to go back and see a kingdom story or go back to reference something, then you can do so with the chapters. There is a Royal Family Fandom Wiki page. If you want to look up any of the characters or something that I mentioned, you can look up information on there. I will link that in the description below. Also the video scenes and the story posts that you see are snippets from whole videos and whole story posts. So obviously if you want to see the whole thing, you have to go back and watch the season. This is a recap. There are snippets. There are dialogue missing in between just in case you get confused. Confused. And lastly, season two happened over the span of, in real life, over four years. So my video style editing has changed. My photo editing style has changed. The CC I have used has also changed. We got skin tone updates. So pictures are gonna look a little different. It shouldn't distract too much from the overall story. But that is everything before we start. I will leave you to the recap. Working on season two, especially Alice May's story, got me through COVID. It kept my spirits high while I had chronic pain for several years. It is a hobby, but I have put my heart and soul into season two, so I hope you enjoy. Beginning of season two, the Windenburg family consisted of King Henry IV, his second wife, Queen Evangeline, or Ava, King Henry's kids, who we had with his first wife, Queen Alice, which were Crown Princess Amira, King Henry's heir, Prince Kellen, Duke of Windenburg, who had eloped with Princess Meghan, Duchess of Windenburg, right before the start of the season, and then Henry and Ava's kids, twins, Prince Charles and Princess Bellatrix, and their youngest, Princess Diana. The season starts with King Henry IV of Windenburg's royal birthday banquet, where the new kingdoms of Selva Dorada and Guangxi are being introduced to the rest of the alliance. Before Amira's father's birthday banquet, Amira had been in a complicated relationship with Lord Mackay of Sulani. At the end of season one, Mackay and Amira had agreed to give their relationship another try despite Mackay's mother, Ali'i, betrothing him to the daughter of an esteemed family in Sulani. Mackay's mother mostly did this because she hated Amira and did not want her son to marry her. However, Mackay had planned to break things off with the arrangement anyway. But at King Henry's birthday banquet, Amira met Prince Jabari the younger brother of King Cayman of Selva Dorada, and they had an instant connection. Amira was still mourning the death of her sister, May. She was still wearing all black even when the rest of her family had stopped, but Jabari had also recently lost both of his parents, the former King and Queen of Selva Dorada. Jabari was very enamored with Amira, but Amira was not letting herself feel quite the same because of her situation with Mackay. Also at the birthday banquet, little Prince Charles met the heir of Guangxi, Princess Araminta, and they developed crushes on each other. But we will talk about them when we get to the royal family of Guangxi's story. After the birthday banquet, Mackay's cousin, Princess Leilana of Sulani, was the only person who really knew about Mackay and Amira's relationship. Leilana told Mackay that at King Henry's banquet, she saw Prince Jabari interested in Amira. Leilana told Mackay that he needs to end things with his betrothed and not lead Amira on, so Mackay broke off the engagement with his betrothed, Hannah, but a lot of drama ensued because of it, and she died. Don't ask, it was a whole thing. After Hannah's death, Mackay blamed himself and essentially ran away to Windenburg. His mother's brother, Leilana's dad, the king, had to convince Mackay's mother to let him be. After that, Mackay worked really hard to get involved with supporting the Windenburg royal family in hopes to win the people of Windenburg's approval one day, and hopefully him and Amira could announce their relationship after some time. However, Amira was working really hard to catch up with her studies to be the monarch one day. 
She even asked to meet with Prince Jabari so she could learn more about the kingdom of Selva Dorada. Jabari and Amira had an amazing time together, and Jabari ended up telling her how he feels about her. Amira was very flattered, but told him that she was kind of in a complicated relationship. However, she said that she would think about things because she was already starting to second guess her relationship with Makai since things had gotten so complicated with them. After talking to her brother, Kellen, and thinking things through, Amira sadly decided to break things off between her and Makai because trying to be together had just become so much work. Amira and Makai stayed friends, and it was honestly the most amicable and mutual breakup for a relationship that had so much drama. After several months of focusing on herself and her royal studies, Amira and Jabari started spending more time together, and their relationship blossomed. They took things slow at first, but ended up dating for quite a while, and when Jabari started considering proposing to Amira, and even asked and gained her father's blessing, Jabari's ex fiance Izara showed up. Izara had cheated on Jabari when they were engaged. It was a very toxic relationship and she was extremely manipulative. So Izara showed up to the Salvadorada Palace one day and just kissed Jabari. She told Jabari she wanted to get back together. Jabari told her he's with Amira, but Izara is very good at manipulating Jabari and somehow got him to agree to think about becoming friends. Jabari wasn't sure if he should tell Amira about this at the time, but he did eventually propose to Amira in front of her family, and it was a very intimate and sweet proposal. After they got engaged, Azara showed back up at the Salvadorada Palace. Amira was already on her way to visit Jabari, and she saw Azara kiss Jabari again. Jabari pushed Azara away immediately, and Amira, who had lost a lot of her confidence after her sister May's death, started to turn around and walk away because she didn't want to deal with the situation. Until Azara insulted Amira's father. Amira turned right back around and slapped Azara, ultimately standing up for herself and her family. This was a huge moment for Amira because she had really changed as a person and had not been able to face her problems since her sister's death. And before her sister's death, she was not afraid to stand up for herself. After that, Azara realized how much more power Amira had over her and she left Amira and Javari alone. Amira and Jabari eventually married. Makai was actually working for the Windenburg family at the time in hopes to build a life of his own away from his overbearing mother. But he saw Amira on her way to her wedding ceremony, and we saw a hint of regret in Makai. But Amira and Jabari had a beautiful wedding ceremony, and a year later, they had their first baby, Princess Alice May, named after Amira's late mother and late sister. Amira at this point was starting to wear less black clothing and just ultimately felt much happier than she had felt in a very long time. Years later, King Henry started having heart issues and eventually passed away very peacefully and surrounded by his family. Before he passed away, Princess Bellatrix got the chance to come out to her father, which she was extremely thankful she got to do before his death. After Henry passed away, Amira went back into a very bad depression. She was struggling with a lot of things, especially with comparing herself to how she used to be before her sister had passed. Amira didn't feel like Jabari quite understood because he had only known the current side of her. However, during this time, Makai was Amira's royal advisor. He took the job to be closer to Amira and support her, even though she was married, they were still friends and meant a lot to each other. But one day, Makai caught Amira in her office, looking very down. Makai's mother had also just passed away, so they were consoling each other. But Amira ended up kissing Makai, immediately pulling away and then regretting it. Makai ended up telling Amira that he was still in love with her, but Amira realized she did not feel the same way and she felt really bad about it. The next morning, Makai turned in his letter of resignation. 
realizing he needed space from Amira, but also realizing how much Suwani was his home and how much he missed it. This was also great closure for both of them and what they both needed to move on. Amira did end up telling Jabari about this. Telling him this made her realize that she did need help and Jabari supported her and finally understood how much she was struggling. Amira then went on to be coronated Queen of Windenburg. After she got help, she started feeling much better and much more like herself. And also, Jabari and Amira had their second child, Prince Cedric. Many years later, Prince Charles became the Earl of Windenburg and married Fallon, who we met at university. And later in the season, they had twins, Lady Cambridge and Lord Felix. Princess Bellatrix, who joined the military, and then married Princess Samaria of Sulani, making her the Marchioness Consort of Sulani, they had two kids, Lord Nohea and Lady Oceane. And for Princess Diana, she married the family's royal portrait painter, Abraham, and became the Baroness of Windenburg. They had two sons, Lord Vincent and Lord Samuel. And Dowager Queen Evangeline, we will talk about a bit later. Also, Prince Kellen, Duke of Windenburg, and his wife, Princess Meghan, Duchess of Windenburg, had a son who was a couple years older than Alice May. His name was Lord William. Now for Willow Creek. At the start of the season, we had King Edmund and Queen Cora, whose kids were all grown up and had their own families. Edmund's heir, Prince Louis, was married to Corinne, and they had four kids. Prince Cornelius, the eldest, Princess Genevieve, and their two youngest twins, Princess Juliet and Princess Elena. Pretty early into season two, King Edmund passed away and Louis was crowned king. Shortly after Louis became king, Dowager Queen Cora passed away, a little bit after her brother, King Henry of Wittenberg, had passed. Now for their kids, Crown Prince Cornelius was very, very angsty growing up especially as a teenager. He always had an attitude. He drove his parents and his siblings crazy. Even his sister, Genevieve, who was very close with him growing up, was being pushed away by him when he went through his phase and she was honestly pretty hurt by it. To teach him a lesson and in hopes of getting his behavior together, Louis and Corinne sent Cornelius to help out on the royal farm. There, he met our farm boy, Ellis, Ellis had lost his mother and never really knew his father, but he had worked hard to create a little life for himself. But Ellis and Cornelius's first meeting went horribly and Cornelius kicked over his trash can and Ellis was like, what the heck? So they had a very rocky start, but eventually Ellis started developing feelings for Cornelius. Cornelius started realizing his feelings for Ellis and they got together. Also, Ellis would mess with Cornelius and call him Corn Boy, and Ellis was Farm Boy, so their couple name is Corn Farm. Cornelius's attitude really improved after him and Ellis got together. His relationships with his family members got better, which Genevieve was so thankful for, and her and Cornelius grew to be close again. Cornelius and Ellis eventually married, and they had one daughter, Vivienne, with the help of one of Ellis's distant relatives, who was their egg donor. Towards the end of season two, we learned that Vivienne is quite the troublemaker, taking after Cornelius. He certainly has his hands full with her, and because of this, Cornelius has told Ellis that he wants to wait several years before they even think about having another child. As for Cornelius' sisters, Princess Genevieve went to travel the world after she became a young adult. During her travels, Genevieve met John Rosenthal. They later married and became the Duchess and Duke Consort of Willow Creek. They had one daughter by the end of season two, Lady Lillian. Princess Juliet, the older of the twins, got together with Prince Manuel at their debutante ball. Manuel was the youngest son of Queen Nea and Prince Consort Philip of Oasis Springs. They later married and became the Duke and Duchess of Oasis Springs. By the end of season two, they had two daughters, Lady Priya, their eldest, and Lady Ishana. As for Princess Elena of Willow Creek, the youngest of the twins, she got together with Prince Takashi, Prince Manuel's best friend, and the youngest son of Emperor Zhao and Empress Mei Lin of Guangxi. 
They later married and became the Marquis and Marchioness of Guangxi. They do not plan on having kids and are perfectly content with being the fun aunt and uncle of their families. At the start of season two, Brindleton Bay was ruled by King Jared and Queen Nina. They had two sons, Crown Prince Johan and Prince James. Prince Johan proposed to Lady Sadira very early into season two, and they had a beautiful wedding at the Brindleton Bay Palace. Johan saw Sadira as his second chance at love after the death of his first love, Princess May, in season one. Johan truly cared for Sadira, even though they were technically an arranged marriage. Johan and Sadira had two kids, Prince Frederick and Princess Molly Grace, both of whom were very close in age. King Jared passed away eventually, and Johan and Sadira became king and queen of Brindleton Bay. Also, if you remember Mackay, well, later on, after the whole Amira situation, he adopted Jessica. Jessica and Prince Frederick had crushes on each other as kids, and throughout the rest of season two, they had been dating. Princess Molly Grace started dating the Prime Minister of Winnipeg's son, Graham Colbright, when they were teenagers. Later in season two, and during the Academic Adventures miniseries, we saw Molly Grace and Graham struggle to stay together while she was attending dance school and Graham was at university. However, after some time apart, they realized that they didn't want to be with anyone else, and towards the end of the season, Graham surprised Molly Grace with a proposal and she said yes. They agreed to have a long engagement until they were ready to have their wedding. Frederick and Molly Grace are also an Alice May story, so we will talk about them more later on. As for Johan's younger brother, Prince James, shortly after Johan and Sadira had married, Prince James proposed to Lord Ian, and they had an intimate wedding at the Brindleton Bay Lighthouse. James and Ian became the Duke and Duke Consort of Brindleton Bay. They never planned to have kids, but they have a cozy little family with their pets. Suvani starts season two with King Mahaka and Queen Lokalani with their only child, Princess Leilana. Princess Leilana married Lord Dean from Oasis Springs and they had twins, Prince Makana, the older of the twins, and Princess Samaria. Around the time Makana and Samaria were kids, King Mahaka passed away and Leilana became the Queen of Suvani. Also, Leilana's mother, now Dowager Queen Lokalani, was still alive at the end of season two, we've discovered the women in Sulani live a very long time. But shortly after Leilana became queen, her and Dean had another child, Prince Kaleo, who we will be talking about a lot later on. Anyway, we've talked about Princess Samaria marrying Princess Bellatrix of Windenburg and their family, but for Prince Makana, now the crown prince, he actually had a huge crush on Bellatrix growing up, but that obviously didn't work out. But Makana met Princess Kimberly, the second daughter of Queen Nea, and Prince Consort Philip of Oasis Springs at their debutante ball. Both Kimmy and Makana are a bit of loners, and they both had the same idea to get away from the party during the debutante ball. But they got along very well and later started dating. After they had been dating for a while, Makana started struggling with his mental health and he asked Kimmy if they could take a break. They hooked up while they were on their break and eventually got back together. And after a long, long while, Makana proposed to Kimmy. They were married and had twin boys, Prince Pilapo, the oldest twin, and Prince Sione. And then shortly after that, they had Princess Wiki. There is a bit more to cover with the Suwani family, but we will talk about them when we get to Alice May's story. However, as for Makai, I mentioned he did adopt Jessica. After he adopted Jessica, he fell in love with her art teacher, Lily. They got married and they had two kids, Lady Iolana and Lord Kaikoa. At the start of season two, Oasis Springs is ruled by Queen Nea and Prince Consort Philip. They had four kids, Crown Princess Arya, Princess Kimberly, Princess Aisha, and Prince Manuel. Around the end of season one, Nea's mother, Dowager Queen Lindsay, who was queen at the time, banished one of her husband's, King Adrian's mistresses, Harmony, and her daughter, Charlotte. 
while Harmony ended up raising Charlotte and Suwani under the protection of Harmony's brother, Dean. If you remember, Dean is married to Leilana, who was princess of Suwani at the time. Leilana and Dean asked King Mahaka to help provide Harmony and Charlotte shelter. Years later, when Charlotte was a teenager, Harmony was seriously plotting to get back at the Oasis Springs family in hopes that her daughter could take the Oasis Springs throne since she was the daughter of the former king. Harmony started including her brother, Dean, in her plans, telling him that she was trying to only get back at Dowager Queen Lindsay. Dean was hesitant at first, especially because his wife, Leilana, and Queen Nea were very good friends. And he was also friends with Prince Consort Philip at the time. But Dean did not like Dowager Queen Lindsay for what they did to his sister and his niece, so he agreed to help as long as no one got hurt. However, he did not know his sister's full plan. Harmony got her daughter Charlotte to be the Oasis Springs kid's royal nanny with the help of Dean. Once Charlotte had gotten close enough to the royal family, Harmony executed her real plan. Harmony sent hitmen to the Oasis Springs Palace and Queen Nea was kidnapped. Dean had become suspicious of his sister's plans by this point and told his wife Leilana, but at that point, it was too late. Nea was taken. The entire Oasis Springs family, Dean and Leilana, were extremely worried. Nea's husband, Philip, went looking for Nea after receiving a message from the kidnappers, which was very dangerous and he could have died. But thanks to Prince Philip's bravery, they were able to get Nea back home safely. The kidnappers were arrested, but Harmony and Charlotte ran and escaped prison. Years after this happened, Dowager Queen Lindsay did pass. Naya and Philip's kids grew older, and we've already talked about their second child, Kimberly's love story, and also their youngest child, Manuel's love story. But for their eldest daughter and Naya's heir, Aria. So Naya and Philip had planned to set Aria up in an arranged marriage. When Aria was a child, they introduced her to Lord Gabriel of Oasis Springs which, side note, is actually Dean's nephew from his other sister, Ari, who was not crazy, and they obviously felt comfortable enough to introduce their daughter to her son. However, Gabriel was a bit of a troublemaker and known to be mean as a child to a lot of the other kids, except for Aria. When Ari and Gabriel became teenagers, Gabriel very much had a crush on Aria. And one day at the Oasis Springs Palace during a royal and noble teen get together, when Prince Cornelius of Oasis Springs was in his most troublesome phase, he called Aria some words that were not nice and they had gotten into an argument. When Gabriel heard Cornelius talking about Aria, he punched Cornelius and they got into a fight. Also side note, Gabriel and Cornelius are cousins. Arya was very smitten that Gabriel stuck up for her when she heard about it, and when she was tending to Gabriel's wounds after the fight, she kissed him. However, Naya and Philip were not happy after Gabriel got into a fight with Prince Cornelius. They thought it was best for Arya not to see Gabriel anymore, but that did not stop Arya and Gabriel from seeing each other. Also, during this whole thing, Naya and Philip's third child, Aisha, was pretty messy as a teenager. She was hooking up with guys in relationships, the main one being her cousin's boyfriend. Aisha and Arya did not get along as teenagers. Manuel usually stayed out of his sister's drama and Kimmy usually had to play mediator. But Arya ratted Aisha out to her parents about seeing their cousin's boyfriend. And Aisha ratted out Arya for continuing to see Gabriel, which Naya and Philip were not happy about. Arya got grounded, but her and Gabriel continued to write letters to each other with the help of Kimmy. And then one day, tragedy struck. Harmony had just committed treason for a job she was hired to do in Guangxi, which we will talk about when we get to that kingdom story. But Harmony was captured and she died in prison. After her death, her daughter, Charlotte, wanted revenge, starting with the Oasis Springs royal family. One evening, Charlotte broke into the Oasis Springs palace and started the biggest 
palace fire I have ever seen. It was so out of control, Charlotte didn't even get a chance to get out of the palace, and she died trying to escape her own wrongdoing. When the fire started, Arya had snuck into the gardens to see Gabriel. They heard the alarms, and Gabriel went to make sure Arya's family got out safe. Kimmy, Aisha, Manuel, and Nea were able to get out safe. However, in the midst of trying to help them escape, Prince Philip got trapped, and he did not make it out of the fire alive. His last words were asking Gabriel to take care of his family, especially his daughter, Arya. Gabriel did escape the fire, but with some serious burns. He also had nightmares haunting him for years after the fire. Nea did give Gabriel and Arya her blessing, though. She considered Gabriel a hero to their family now, and she knew Philip would have felt the same. Two years later, Gabriel proposed to Arya, and they were married. Arya and Gabriel did try for a baby for several years. However, they were not able to conceive. They eventually adopted Sahar, who naturally was bestowed the title of prince. When they adopted Sahar, Nea told Arya he would not be in line for the throne. However, Arya fought for Sahar to be her heir. After much discourse, Nea agreed under the condition that Sahar marry a noble with Oasis Springs blood. So, by the end of the season, Sahar was introduced to Lady Giselle. They were toddlers when they met, and they've already been such messy toddlers around each other. Sahar would sing to Giselle, Giselle would bite him, it's been wild. Also, during all of this, Princess Aisha became a fashion designer phenomenon. She really followed her passion after Philip's death. She moved to the city to pursue her dreams, and is now one of the most renowned couture fashion designers in the world. Aisha never had kids, nor does she want them. She's not interested in being in a romantic relationship, and she is the happiest she has ever been. The Kingdom of Selva Dorada starts Season 2 with King Cayman, Queen Zamora, and their two sons, Crown Prince Adric and Prince Elon. We of course already saw King Cayman's brother, Prince Jabari's story, but do you remember Jabari's ex who said that she would leave Jabari alone? Well, around the time Adric and Elon were teenagers, we found out Zara got pregnant with King Cayman's baby. This was a very messy situation because of the relationship between King Cayman and Azara not being good. So whatever methods Azara used to sleep with Cayman was probably not ethical. But Azara had been threatening to expose their child if Cayman did not pay her hush money. So Cayman did and hid the news about the baby for a long time. However, one day, Zara got so impatient and showed up to King Cayman's birthday with their baby, Nephthys, or Sissy for short, demanding more money from him. Queen Zamora was obviously very upset about this whole situation when she found out. However, because of Queen Nea's kidnapping, the fire hadn't happened yet at that time, and the royals being aware that it was because of King Adrian's mistress and bastard child who was banished by Queen Lindsay, because Zamora knew this, she stepped up. Convinced King Cayman that they needed to give Azara more money than she was asking for in exchange for being the ones to raise Sissy, especially because she knew the life with Azara would not have been good. Azara agreed and used the money to have the life that she always wanted. Sissy was raised by her father and Zamora, who loved her like her own. Sissy was very aware of her birth mother, Azara, and had no interest meeting the woman who sold her for money. But around the time Zamora found out about Sissy at Cayman's birthday banquet, their youngest son, Elon, met Natalia. Natalia was being forced by her mother to social climb. Her mother wanted Natalia to marry the heir to the Selva Dorada throne, Adric. 
but Natalia spoke to the wrong prince, and her and Elon had an instant connection. Natalia and Elon married and became the Duke and Duchess of Selva Dorada, and they eventually had two girls, Fola Shade, or Shade for short, and Vinta. As for Adric, Adric met one of Princess Bellatrix's friends from the military, Desta, at a royal event. Adric and Desta got along very well and eventually started dating. After they had been dating for quite some time, Adric's father, Cayman, passed away. Sissy was also a child around this time, just for some timeline context. After Cayman passed away, Queen Nea came to Adric with some news. So before we get into this, you should know, when Bellatrix joined the military as a young adult, she was part of the soldiers that helped save Strangerville from the mother plant. This took place in the Royal Twin Adventures miniseries that, timeline-wise, took place alongside Season 2 when Bellatrix and Charles became young adults. But after Strangerville was saved by the mother plant, Nea was part of the team leading the research to find out what Strangerville was before everybody became possessed. They found out it used to be the Kingdom of Dockerai, which Adric's ancestors were the rulers of, therefore making him now the King of Dockerai. So the kingdom became the United Kingdom of Selva Dorada and Dockerai, or the UKSD. Adric had his coronation ceremony and later proposed to Desta, who was very supportive during this entire situation. Desta and Adric got married, and she became the queen of the UKSD. By the end of season two, they had a boy, Crown Prince Osiris, and then two daughters, Princess M.M. and Princess Siphon. As for Sissy, she was still a teenager at the end of season two. She had a situationship with Lord Zachary of Sulani when she was a younger teen, and then she ended up dating Lord Itaro of Dakarai in the Academic Adventures miniseries that started toward the end of season two and ended a few months after season two ended. Unfortunately, Itaro kind of messed things up between him and Sissy, and they broke up. At the start of Season 2, Guangxi was ruled by Emperor Zhao and Empress Mei Lin. Their kids were twins, Princess Araminta, who was the heir, Princess Anya, and their youngest, Prince Takashi. We knew from the Realm of Magic miniseries that took place right before Season 2 that Zhao and Mei Lin's marriage was not great. They never really loved each other. Zhao was in love with Queen Corinne of Willow Creek's mother, but she did not love him back. So Zhao and Mei Lin were set up into an arranged marriage and eventually had their kids. When their kids were young, Mei Lin started having an affair with Duke Kintaro of Guangxi, who was Emperor Zhao's close friend. Kintaro knew how Zhao treated Mei Lin and let her confide in him, eventually becoming her closest confidant. As for the kids, Anya was always extremely jealous of Araminta growing up and wanted the throne to herself. We learned in the 60 Facts and Secrets video that Anya even tried to push Araminta in front of a moving car when they were kids. Now for Araminta, as I mentioned before, her and Prince Charles of Windenburg had crushes on each other as kids and eventually started dating when they became teenagers. Emperor Zhao had even asked King Henry of Winnenburg if they could set up an arranged marriage between their kids, but because of everything that had happened with Amira almost being forced into arranged marriage with Johan in season one, Henry refused. Araminta and Charles dated for quite a long time, but one day, Emperor Zhao told Araminta that she needed to break up with Charles. There had been talks of threats from the kingdom of Chinxing, which apparently Anya had something to do with. So Emperor Zhao insisted that Araminta be set up in an arranged marriage with the Emperor of Chinxing's youngest son, Prince Han. Araminta was very upset and tried to refuse, but her father wouldn't let her. She broke up with Charles, and both of them were very upset. King Henry and Amira even tried to talk to Emperor Zhao to see if they could persuade him to change his mind, but the Emperor refused. After they broke up, Araminta and Charles wanted to see if they could find a way to make things work, 
but Charles was hard to get in contact with for some reason. Charles started drinking and ended up rebounding and hooking up with Princess Kimberly of Oasis Springs, which, when Kimmy found out that Araminta and Charles were potentially trying to make things work, she felt so bad. Araminta found out about the hookup and was very hurt by it, especially since her and Charles had wanted to find a way to make things work. She ended up telling Charles that they shouldn't be together anymore, and she broke things off with him completely. She then was introduced to Prince Han of Qinxing. Han was very pessimistic about the arranged marriage and was not excited to meet Araminta at first. But as soon as he saw Araminta for the first time, he was completely enamored with her. However, Han was very shy around Araminta, often not knowing what to say. He could also tell Araminta was often distracted around him, which truthfully was because she was still trying to get over Charles. Charles tried to get in touch with Araminta many times after they ended things, and she even received a lot of drunk voicemails from him. Charles even started a fight with Han at their debutante ball, which Ember Zhao asked Araminta to take Han to, and Araminta was not happy about Charles starting the fight. Eventually, Han and Araminta started seeing each other more and growing closer. While they were growing closer, Anya was plotting. One evening, Emperor Zhao's body was discovered. He had been poisoned and killed. Remember earlier when I said Harmony committed a crime in Guangxi? Well, this was the crime. Harmony was hired to kill Zhao, and she was locked up and died in prison. That's when Charlotte went to go set the Oasis Springs Palace on fire, and we all know how that went. Well, later, it was revealed that Anya was the one who hired Harmony, and she was actually ordered to poison Araminta, but the teas got switched by accident by a staff member. When Araminta found this out, she banished Anya, and Anya was not seen after that. Meanwhile, Han still had a crush on Araminta and Araminta had started to develop feelings for Han. Now, Han had a bit of a troubled childhood. His mother died when she gave birth to him, and his father and older brother, Akio, who was the Chinching heir, had blamed him his whole life for her death. His father, Emperor Li Wei, grew silent after his wife's death and rarely spoke to Han growing up. And Akio called him a monster his whole life as well. Only Han's sister, Princess Tai, was kind to him, and she basically raised him. Well, one day, when Araminta was visiting the Chinching Palace, she witnessed Akio mistreating Han and stood up for him. This meant so much to Han, and he finally admitted his feelings for Araminta. Soon after, they married and had one of my most favorite weddings. And two years later, they had their first child, Crown Princess Sayori, followed by their daughters, Princess Rin and Princess Mamie. And I had already mentioned Araminta's younger brother, Takashi, marrying Princess Elena. As for Dowager Empress Mei Lin, she did end up going off to marry Duke Kintaro of Guangxi. As for Han's family, Emperor Li Wei is still the reigning monarch by the end of season two. He tried very hard to patch things up with Han after Araminta had brought up the way that they treated Han to his attention. Akio had also tried in his own way to mend his relationship with his little brother. And also, during all of this, Akio was married to Princess Izumi, which was an arranged marriage, and they had two sons, Prince Kaito and Prince Yuzuru. Princess Tai, Han's sister, was married to Admiral Zhang, and when we met them, they already had their son, Lord Shen. When Han and Araminta's daughters grew up, Zayori started to get bullied in school. She had become very self-conscious about her different color eyes, and had asked her parents not to go back to school, which they initially agreed to. Later on, Akio found out about this, started berating Han and Araminta, telling them that Zayori needs to learn to stand up for herself, and that he wanted to teach Zayori. Han was very reluctant, but because Zayori expressed interest in this, they let Zayori stay with Akio for several months, 
Akio was very hard on Zayori, and when Zayori came back, she had developed a huge attitude and did not get along with her mother, Araminta. Even before she had left, her mother and her were clearly very different and had a lot of conflicting feelings for each other. This is when Araminta and Han decided to introduce Sayori to Lord Taesu, the son of the Duke and Duchess of Chinxing. However, things did not go as planned. Lord Taesu asked Zayori a question about her eyes, and Zayori punched him. Something to note before we begin Alice May's story is due to Jabari and Amir's past experiences and trauma, they were very overprotective of both Alice May and Cedric, and the kids honestly grew up pretty sheltered because of it. Also, just a reminder, just because I wrote the story doesn't mean I agree with all of the characters' actions and the consequences given, but I did write what made sense for the characters in the story. Now, when Alice May was a kid, Queen Amira hired a new royal advisor who had a son, Alice May's age, named Caspian. Amira asked Alice May to make Caspian feel as welcomed as possible. However, Caspian was clearly a troubled kid who was not in the mood to be around other kids. But that did not stop Alice May from trying to include him in her group of friends. Alice May's friend group included Crown Prince Frederick of Brindleton Bay and Princess Molly Grace of Brindleton Bay, her cousin Lord William, Lady Jessica, Mackay's adopted daughter, and Liege Nani, Mackay's brother Kona's oldest child, and Prince Kaleo of Sulani. One evening, Alice May overheard her mother's new royal advisor and Caspian's mom, Nia, talking to Amira and Jabari. Nia used to be Queen Leilana of Sulani's royal advisor and moved to Windenburg with Caspian because she had just gotten a divorce from Caspian's dad, Maleko. Apparently, Maleko had two affairs while married to Nia. The second affair was with one of his clients at his talent agency. The affair was mentioned in the local newspaper in Sulani, but Queen Leilana was able to pull the papers before too much damage had been done and before Caspian found out. Caspian was very close to his dad, so he was not happy about moving away from him, and his mom didn't want him to know about the affair yet. Fast forward several years later to when Alice May was a teenager. It had been quite some time since she had seen Caspian since his parents ended up agreeing that he could live in Sulani with his dad but he was sent back to live with his mom because he got expelled from school. When Alice May saw Caspian for the first time after he returned, she was very interested in him. This was also the first time we saw Prince Cleo of Sulani be jealous. Cleo had a crush on Alice May since they were kids, and we later found out he was actually very manipulative to Alice May even when they were children. However, his colors did not truly show until Caspian returned. Caspian was a man of few words, but early on we did get to see multiple instances of him being supportive to Alice May. Caspian and Alice May did start to hang out more and become closer. We got to see Caspian gradually growing happier, smiling more, and him and Alice May opening up to each other. Caspian even designated the nickname Princess for Alice May. He also only called her by her full name because he loved her name, while everyone else called Alice May AM. Cleo was not happy about them spending time together at all. He would call Caspian a commoner to Alice May, even though he wouldn't dare say that in front of their friend group since Frederick and Jessica were dating and Jessica used to be untitled. Also because Frederick and Molly Grace's grandmother used to be a commoner as well. Cleo even found out that Caspian got expelled from his school in Sulani and tried to use that against him, but we later found out Caspian was framed for theft at his school and should not have been expelled in the first place. This was an important moment though since Caspian was upset that he wasn't living with his dad anymore and initially hated his living situation in Windenburg and him and his mom Nia fought frequently because of it. But spending time with Alice May had really helped him look on the brighter side of things and he decided to stay in Windenburg. Caspian also admitted he had a crush on Alice May to his dad around this time, but this is when Alice May also started having some mental health issues and Caspian didn't want to pressure her, which is the opposite of what Kaleo was doing at the time. Alice May did find out she had depression and Caspian was very supportive and helped make sure her parents got her the help that she needed. 
Caspian also knew that Alice May had always wanted a dog, so he convinced Amira and Jabari to finally get her one by putting together and showing them a PowerPoint presentation about all the ways dogs could help people with depression. That's when we met Benji, Alice May's new Pomeranian pup. Months later, Caspian and Alice May had their first date at a local carnival. They had a great time and Alice May asked Caspian to the debutante ball and he said yes. However, the next morning, we found out that the paparazzi had caught Alice May and Caspian on their date. This was not the first run with the paparazzi that they had, but this was the first time the media really started bashing Caspian, commenting on his edgy appearance, saying that the princess should not be dating someone like that. Caspian even got attacked and almost hurt by the paparazzi that morning when the papers had come out, which his mother was very concerned about. Alice May's parents and Caspian's mom ended up asking the two of them to keep their relationship a secret, which was kind of awkward at the time because they hadn't truly admitted their feelings to each other yet, but they wanted them to tell the paparazzi that they are just friends and only allowed them to go to the debutante ball if they agreed to go as friends. They figured this was the best thing to do to keep them both safe, and Amira figured this was the best thing for Alice May's mental health. Then one day, Cleo's true colors were revealed to us. The friend group was staying at the Sulani royal family's Mer Palace for the weekend, and Cleo decided this was going to be when he asked Alice May to the debutante ball. Cleo was kind of delusional and fully expecting Alice May to say yes. He even admitted his feelings for her, telling her that he has loved her since they were kids. But when she said no and said that she didn't see Cleo in that way, he got very upset when he found out that Caspian was going to be at the debutante ball, even though Alice May said that they were only going as friends, Cleo snapped. He blamed everything on Caspian, called Alice May a bitch, and kicked her out of the Mer Palace, lying to their friends and saying that she left because she wasn't feeling well. Alice May was extremely hurt by what Kaleo did, but thankfully, Caspian was staying in Sulani with his dad at the time, so he was able to be there for Alice May and Alice May stayed the rest of the weekend with them. A few weeks later though, Kaleo found out his dad might be having an affair based on a conversation he overheard his dad having on the phone. Soon after that was Kaleo's brother Makana's wedding to Kimmy. Kaleo found Alice May at the wedding, told Alice May he was so sorry about what happened at the Mer Palace, and then told her about what he suspected of his dad. We later found out that evening from an anxiety attack that Alice May had, that Kaleo had clearly hurt her and made her feel bad about herself a lot in the past quickly switching to either apologizing and promising to not do whatever he did again, or telling her that she was overreacting. This caused Alice May to struggle with her confidence and feel isolated with her friend group and family, thinking her feelings weren't valid, and in turn never telling anybody else about what Kaleo did to her, since he had manipulated her into thinking the things he did weren't a big deal, or that no one would believe her if she did tell them. Finally, it was time for the long-anticipated debutante ball. Upon arrival, Kaleo was very rude to Caspian, as expected. Kaleo had tried to convince William and Frederick that he was a bad influence on Alice May, which did work on William, but to Kaleo's disappointment, Frederick berated Kaleo for being rude to Caspian. That's when Kaleo figured out how to get Frederick back on his side. He convinced Frederick that he heard Caspian say he was interested in Frederick's girlfriend Jessica, which was not true. It didn't help that Frederick saw Jessica being very friendly towards Caspian, which she was literally just trying to play matchmaker and tell Caspian to take Alice May out on a date, but this did cause some issues with Frederick and Jessica, and it did make Frederick dislike Caspian. It didn't help that since Brindleton Bay was hosting the debutante ball, Frederick was in a horrible mood. Not only because of his doubts about Jessica, but because of all the drama happening, thanks to Lady Ember. So this is just a quick side tangent. William used to date Lady Minerva, but they broke up after some time. Pretty much immediately after they broke up, William hooked up with Lady Ember, which he realized was a huge mistake. 
but he did end up taking her to the debutante ball after she convinced him. Ember never liked Minerva growing up and she was always jealous of her, so she was gloating to Minerva that she was William State at the debutante ball. Then she started a fight with Minerva. After Ember and Minerva had been pulled apart, William told Ember that they shouldn't see each other anymore and apologized to Minerva. Shortly after that, Ember was found with the Marquis Liam of Willow Creek in Molly Grace's bed. Liam and Molly Grace had a history, but she hated both Ember and him with a passion. She chewed out both of them and her boyfriend, Graham, came in to check on her and Liam just randomly punched Graham upon arrival. Liam and Ember did get kicked out of the palace. But anyway, back to Alice May and Caspian, who had been trying to steal moments with each other all evening. Well, when they finally got a chance to dance with each other, they were interrupted by William. Cleo had clearly gotten to William. To Alice May's surprise, William started braiding Alice May, asking her to give Kaleo a break because the last thing their friend group needed was drama between them, and that Kaleo was already upset that Alice May rejected him and that she chose to leave the Mer Palace early that weekend. Alice May was pissed. She found Kaleo in the ballroom, took him to the side, and chewed him out. During this time, Molly Grace found Caspian, wanted to confirm that he had feelings for Alice May, and told him to wait outside for her so they could get some alone time. On her way to find Alice May, she overheard Kaleo and Alice May's argument, hearing Kaleo call Alice May sensitive and a bitch, making Molly Grace immediately step in. That's when Alice May started filling her in on as much as she could. However, they were interrupted by a very angry Frederick who was already fed up from everything going on that night. But Alice May and Molly Grace did get away for Alice May to be able to tell her everything. Molly Grace consoled her, was obviously very mad at Kaleo, and said that she wanted to hear any details that she missed later, but right now, Caspian was waiting for Alice May outside. This is when Alice May and Caspian finally admitted their true feelings for each other and had their first kiss, which, after such a slow burn, was extremely satisfying. Cleo did see their first kiss, but didn't know what he could possibly do in this moment and decided to go home. When Cleo got home, we got a glimpse of how his mom, Leilana, seemed to handle things with him. She tried to comfort him, but ultimately seemed to push off the responsibility of him to his sister Samaria, telling him that he should call her and go talk to her in the morning. It was in this moment that Cleo hinted to Leilana about Dean's affair. The next day, Alice May and Caspian spent the day together and it was completely perfect until later that night. It turns out Kaleo was staying at Williams with Frederick, which was right next to the Windenburg Palace. Kaleo saw Caspian leaving and told William and Frederick he was going to go speak with him. But Caspian, knowing that he himself had issues with aggression in the past, refused to argue with Kaleo and walked away but not without first saying a few words to try to stick up for Alice May. This completely angered Kaleo, and Kaleo attacked him. Caspian tried to defend himself, but he could not fight back, knowing how much trouble he would get into if he did hit the prince, and Kaleo beat him till he could barely move. Kaleo also knew how much Caspian's dad meant to him and threatened to bring down his talent agency, which was pretty much his life's work, if Caspian told anybody about what Kaleo did. Frederick and William were terrified when Kaleo came back. They saw the bruises on his hands, not fully knowing what Kaleo did, but Kaleo ultimately convinced them to keep quiet, although they felt very guilty. Caspian's mom was out of town and its phone had broken because of Kaleo, but Caspian did manage to get home that night before passing out in the foyer. The next morning, Alice May, Molly Grace, Jessica, and Nani planned to hang out at the Brindleton Bay Palace, not realizing that Kaleo and William would also be there to hang out with Frederick. This is the moment everything came out. The whole friend group found out Kaleo had been lying to them. They learned everything he had done to Alice May, and they heard him call Caspian a commoner. Jessica also found out that Kaleo tried to make it seem like her and Caspian were flirting during the debutante ball and he put her in Frederick's relationship in jeopardy for his own selfish reasons. 
Alice May also learned that Kaleo had done something to Caspian, which is why he hadn't spoken to her since he left the night before, and she flew to Windenburg immediately to check on him. That's when Alice May found Caspian with serious injuries and immediately took him to the hospital where she called her parents and his parents and told them what happened. Alice May's parents asked her to come home while Caspian was being treated by the doctors so Alice May could tell them everything. However, to Alice May's surprise, Kaleo was waiting for Alice May at the Windenburg Palace when she got home. Alice May was beyond furious at this point. Considering Kaleo almost killed Caspian, Alice May snapped and stood up to Kaleo, similarly to how Amira stood up to Azara. Alice May laid into Kaleo, refusing to let Kaleo make her feel bad about herself, which is when Amira and Jabari arrived. Amira and Jabari told Kaleo to leave their daughter alone. Kaleo even tried to argue with them, but they told Kaleo that his parents were already called and on their way over. During all of this, this is when Leilana found out, with the help of her cousin Makai, that Dean was having an affair with Dowager Queen Evangeline of Winnenburg, Alice May's step-grandmother and Bellatrix's mother. Leilana confronted Dean, ultimately telling him he needed to stop seeing Ava and that they needed to make sure to keep this a secret. Dean berated Leilana for this, saying that she only ever cares about the family's reputation, so this was definitely some good insight on the Sulani royal family dynamics. On the day Caspian was sent to the hospital, Leilana and Dean attended an event at Windenburg where they saw Ava, and Leilana confronted her. Shortly after the confrontation, Leilana and Dean were called to the Windenburg Palace because of Kaleo. This is where they learned everything their son had done. Leilana was furious and assured them that he would be punished. Leilana then asked to speak to Amira, telling Amira about her stepmother, Evangeline, and Dean's affair. Amira was furious and went to confront Ava, yelling at her for seeing Bellatrix's father-in-law and making her promise she would stop seeing him. Amira did also learn in this moment that Ava was feeling very lonely since her kids had all moved out and she felt like she wasn't needed anymore. So Amira agreed to let her stay with them at the Windenburg Palace until she felt better. Back at the hospital, Caspian's surgery had gone well, although he was seriously injured and the doctor said he could have died. Alice May stayed with him until he felt better, and they were also visited by William and Frederick, who apologized to Alice May for everything they had done and for believing Kaleo. Kaleo did get punished and was sent to military school. His parents also made him pay for all of Caspian's hospital bills. Almost a year later, we got to see Caspian and Alice May finally enjoying being together. However, Amira still insisted that they keep their relationship a secret. This did really bother Alice May, and her and Caspian wished they could be public. It wasn't until they told each other that they loved each other that Alice May decided to ask her mom to reconsider. However, things did not go as Alice May planned, and Amira wouldn't even hear Alice May out, which made her extremely frustrated. Later that night, we see a nightmare that Amira has showing how terrified she is of losing Alice May like she lost her sister. However, the next evening at dinner, Alice May decided she was going to say everything on her mind no matter what, but Amira still refused to let her speak and snap at her, causing Alice May to tell Amira that she is not the queen that she thought she was. This left an impact on Amira. Alice May ran up to her room and Jabari spoke to her. Jabari also learned here how much his overprotectiveness had an impact on Alice May's confidence and relationships growing up, and he agreed to be less overbearing in the future. Jabari then talked to Amira and helped calm her fears and convinced her to talk to Alice May. This was a very sweet moment where Amira finally admitted her fears to her daughter, helping Alice May understand her better. Amira did finally agree to let her and Caspian go public and shortly after, Alice May and Caspian announced their relationship. During this time, Kaleo had returned from military school, and we could see a slight difference in his behavior and aggression. He hadn't seen Alice May or Caspian since everything happened, mostly because there was a restraining order against him. This was definitely for the best, especially since we saw Alice May having an anxiety attack even from just seeing Kaleo on the TV, showing the long-term effects that his abuse caused for her. 
However, Alice May was always still on Kaleo's mind, even when Kaleo met Lady Kanda at the Guangxi Palace, who ultimately started Kaleo's hoe face. And we definitely saw a pattern with the girls that Kaleo was hooking up with. Kaleo even hooked up with Lady Gia, who had dated William for a short time after everything with Kaleo happened. Gia and William had broken up because Lady Ember tried to claim she was pregnant with William's baby, which she was not. It was Marquis Liam's baby. And side note, Liam and Ember were forced to marry. They had a son named Lord Gilbert, and then Ember died when I got carried away with her drama on a stream, which is where Liam got a DJ pregnant and is now married to her, and they have a daughter named Lady Jolene. Anyway, Kaleo's hoe phase made it obvious that he was still thinking of Alice May, and we also saw how unhappy Kaleo was with himself during all of this. But when Caspian and Alice May's relationship went public, it set something off in Kaleo. Now, remember when I said at the beginning of this that Caspian's parents got divorced because his dad Maleko had two affairs, one of which was a client, and Leilana pulled that story from the newspapers before anyone else could see? Well, Caspian was still never told about the affair, which Alice May only learned shortly before this. When she found out, she got really worried, went to Caspian's mom with Amira to tell her and just to make sure that she knew Alice May was aware of the situation, asking if they would tell Caspian soon. Mia told her that Maleko had planned to tell him on his own eventually. Well, a few days after Alice May and Caspian went public, Cleo found those old newspapers about Caspian's dad in his mother's storage room. He also found his mother's aunt, Ali'i's ledger, with some questionable transactions, and he decided to take the ledger with him to see if he could figure out what they were. Kaleo ended up sharing the news story about Caspian's dad with the Sulani news station, knowing people would be all over the news about the Windenburg princess's boyfriend's family. However, Kaleo did not know the CEO of the news station was working with a detective to try and bring down Kaleo's family by exposing them for keeping so many secrets from the public. But when Kaleo got home from the news station, we saw his regret for what he had done. Realizing he should not be putting Alice May through anything more than he already had. Also in this moment, he realized he left his backpack at the news station with his great aunt's ledger in it. Cleo ran back to the station immediately, but by then, it was too late. The news had already come out. Alice May and Caspian were out during the time the news broadcasted. Caspian saw it and was furious. He was especially hurt when he found out that Alice May knew for so long. The news also exposed Makai's mother and Leilana's aunt, Ali'i, saying that she had made some questionable transactions with the black market. We then see Dowager Queen Evangeline's reaction to this and her immediately calling Leilana, telling her she thinks that her aunt might have been responsible for May's death. We then find out that Evangeline only knew this because Henry had proof that there was something questionable about his daughter May's death. Evangeline was the only one who knew. Henry didn't want Amira to find out because he didn't want her to spend her whole life looking for the person that had poisoned her sister. Evangeline and Leilana did agree to look into this more, looping Makai in so he knew what his mother had possibly done. Meanwhile, Caspian was still furious, and Alice May was trying to calm him down. They got into an argument, and getting lost in his emotions, Caspian carelessly stepped into the street when a drunk driver was approaching. But Alice May was quick to see the car, pushing Caspian out of the way. The driver missed Caspian by mere inches, but Alice May was not so lucky. She was immediately rushed to the hospital, where her family was anxiously waiting. For Amira, this was her biggest fear come to life. Kaleo heard about the accident and tried to see Alice May at the hospital, but was unsuccessful. This was a huge eye-opener for Kaleo. Finally realizing what his actions could do, and the fact that he almost got Alice May killed. Alice May did make it out alive, but it took a very long time for her to heal, and she came out with scars that would last her a lifetime. 
Caspian did end up talking to his parents about everything and was, of course, very upset. Nia did tell him that Alice May came to her when she realized Caspian didn't know, which made Caspian feel horrible and he blamed himself for getting upset and Alice May almost getting killed. Caspian did not want to talk to his dad for some time after this, but his dad did everything he could to make it up to Caspian. Eventually, Caspian started speaking to him again, and they have been working on getting things back to normal. After Kaleo left the hospital, he had a breakdown about what had happened and confessed what he had done to his mother, and Leilana was livid. Kaleo finally said that he would go to therapy as Dean and Leilana had been trying to get him to do because it had been helping them with their marriage. It did get out that Kaleo had been the one to leak the news and also his attack on Caspian got out. As a result, he lost the right to be called his royal highness, though he remained a prince. Kaleo also started going to therapy, as he said he would. About a year after the controversy, Kaleo learned from his therapist what emotional abuse was, and he realized that is what he had done to Alice May, though he was not ready to say it out loud. Also, during all of this, Dean and Ava decided to tell Bellatrix and Samaria about their affair, which they were obviously not happy about. Bellatrix and Samaria moved away with their kids from Sulani to Salvadorada for a bit to get away from their families. A year later, Alice May and Caspian went to university, and Alice May's brother Cedric started high school. This was the start of our Academic Adventures miniseries. Alice May and William went to Brightchester and were flatmates, and this is also when William started dating a guy named JC. Caspian and Graham, Molly Grace's boyfriend, were roommates at Foxbury, and they had actually become really good friends. Everything was so perfect for a couple of months. Alice May was enjoying her freedom at university, and her and Caspian were the happiest they had ever been. She even made a new friend, Lady Kanda. But one day, Alice May and Cedric got news from the palace. Their mother, Amira, had died from a heart attack making Alice May the new queen of Windenburg. Alice May dropped out of university, and she honestly struggled a lot while she was mourning her mother and learning her new duties as queen. Cedric started acting out at school and hurting his friends and classmates in the process, but I will elaborate more on that later. But the season ends with Alice May's coronation. A few more things to add before we wrap up. I've already talked about most of the friend group's dating lives, but Liege Nani was dating Malia Kama during all of this and they went to the debutante ball together. William and JC ended up breaking up and William got together with Lady Kanda at the end of the Academic Adventures miniseries. And yes, he does know about Kanda and Kaleo. Cedric, I mentioned, went through a lot. He started the miniseries dating a movie star, Sterling, and Sterling broke his heart by having a fling with Cedric's classmate, Colin. After Amira died, this is when Cedric started acting out and hanging out with the wannabe socialites. And he attempted to get revenge on Colin by dating him and then using this boy named Davy, who Cedric knew had a crush on him. He kissed Davy in front of everyone. Colin got upset. Davy was hurt. Cedric felt really bad about it. Cedric's best friend, Tally, who is Nani's little sister, got upset with Cedric for not being a good friend and they didn't speak to each other for months. Ultimately, this hatred from Cedric's classmates pushed him to focus on himself. He realized his love for fashion design and met up with Princess Aisha to discuss his future being a fashion designer. And at Cedric's debutante ball, him and Tally made up and became friends again.
And that is everything. It has been a wild and very long ride. So one of the next videos I will be posting is going to be an updated royal family tree video so you all can see the update before the start of season three. Season three will be out later in August. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure your notifications are turned on so you can be notified when season three does come out. You can also see updates on my Instagram. So make sure to give that a follow as well. If you enjoyed the recap, leave a comment, like the video, and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye.